I don't hate AKs. Everybody relax. I'm actually a Soviet firearms enthusiast. I have more AKs than I have ARs. Just relax. I even went as far as to wear the uh, uniform of my people today for this video. But because I shoot so many AKs and I like AKs, I think I'm uniquely suited to talk about their shortcomings. Today, specifically, we're going to be talking about suppressed AKs. However, if you would like to learn more about firearms in a professional capacity, then you should check out Sonoran Desert Institute. SDI is an accredited online school focusing on courses pertinent to firearms disciplines. For anyone looking to break into a career in the firearms industry, or perhaps just expand their horizons in a given area. Their online program allows students to flexibly earn up to an Associates of Science degree in firearms technology and or an advanced gunsmithing certificate. Of particular interest to me were their advanced armor courses, specifically dealing in PCCs and AR-10s. Although they do offer an advanced 1911 armorers course for anyone who wants to work on antiques. SDI is nationally accredited by the Distance Education Accrediting Commission. I feel like this is way more productive than Broomball or Humanities at a Liberal Arts College. I really wish I knew about this. If you'd like to know more about their current offerings, you can catch up with them at sdi.edu. So today's video is actually a continuation of a video that I did about a year ago, which was called something along the lines of why piston guns suck. I don't want to toot my own horn. It's a very comprehensive video. Somewhere along the way, we've made a compromise to achieve the unified goal of self-loading operation. If you want to do some learning, then go seek out that video. I'll have it linked in the description box down below. So I've divided this into three categories. Guns that are okay, guns that are eh, depends, and then guns that are bad. The problem with that video is that it's 20 minutes long. And the reason revolvers suck is because they literally have a gap. But there's one thing that was missing from that video that I couldn't do then that I can do today, and that is an apples to apples comparison between a same configuration DI gun versus a long stroke gas piston gun. That I can do because now we have the White Russian, which is a 7.62x39 direct impingement gun. My hypothesis was that if we could get a direct impingement 7.62x39 gun, that its performance suppressed would be superior to that of the 5.56 gun. So I went out and shot these two side by side using the same can, which is the Energetic Arms Vox, a full video out on that thing if you guys want to look that one up. We have condenser microphones, like the one that's on top of this camera right now, that bring in audio signals and then amplify the stuff that is real low and dampen the stuff that is real high, and you end up with this microphone attenuation that does not give you a real representation of sound in the video. Like, the volume of the video that you're watching right now is not the real volume of what's being recorded. If I was doing that, then you would need hearing protection when you were watching a video on YouTube. That wouldn't make any sense. But I have devised a few methods that I use for suppressor testing that allows us to give you a relativistic idea of what's going on. Because we have that microphone issue where we can't get the real audio to you guys you only get kind of a windowed look at the audio a lot of people will focus on di guns here and you'll see a whole bunch of gas blast out of the ejection port same thing happens in the ak extra gas pressure builds it's just up here so to give you a lay of the land of what we're talking about, we have some of the energy from behind the projectile is bled off into a tube that then is run back to the bolt and carrier, and that pressure is used to run the reciprocating mass to the rear, allowing us to gain self-loading operation. Bolt. This AK here, we have a similar setup. We have the gas block here, gas ports underneath of it. However, 
instead of running the gas all the way back to the carrier, the carrier comes forward in a piston. That pressure then pushes on that piston and runs to the rear. About here, it's going to unlock and vent in all AKs. Ultimately, you end up with full operational pressure right at the gas vent port. So right where it vents, you have full barrel pressure right there going into ambient space. And when you have gas venting into ambient space, that makes noise. So the suppressor's on the end of the gun, soaking up as much of the gas as it possibly can. It's coming out of the end of the muzzle. However, you have a second high pressure vent, which is back here and up here. The difference is that in a direct impingement gun, that gas travels all the way to the rear, hits the carrier, and then is vented out to the side. So this gas has done a lot more work to get there before it gets into the ambient space. It has traveled through all the guts before it has gotten to us. This is pushed on that piston a little bit and then the rest of it has just been blown right out the top. So some might say, Kurt, you mentioned the capacity for an adjustable gas block on the direct impingement gun. What about using the KNS adjustable gas piston for the AK? Would this help the situation any? And to those people, I would say, I actually don't know. And that's because I've not officially tested the KNS piston. KNS, if you're watching, would love to book in some of your pistons for testing, get to the bottom of it. But I try my best not to remark heavily on something that I have not thoroughly tested myself. But looking at the design of the KNS piston, I'm not entirely sure that it would help in dealing with excess pour pop. And here's why I'll explain. In general, there are really two types of things that we're talking about when we're talking about adjustable gas blocks. There's restrictors and splitters, and they do exactly what you would think they would do. Restrictors restrict the gas flow down to a finite amount, and then splitters basically vent part of it and use part of it. So these will have different effects. There will be trade-offs to each of them. The splitter, for instance, is going to be counterproductive to what we're talking about, trying to reduce that port pop, making it louder than say a restrictor. However, a restrictor, if you zero the gun and then open the gas port all the way up, you may get some vertical stringing in there. So there may be a point of impact shift depending on how aggressive the restricting gas block is. You can get restrictive gas blocks and splitting gas blocks and hybrids of the two in both direct impingement guns and gas piston guns. But what I would say is that the KNS piston is rarely neither. If I had to put it in one of the two boxes, I would say that it's more of a splitter because it doesn't really change the aperture size any, and thus the amount of gas that flows into the gas block, at least, again, looking at the design on the internet. Uh, I would say that it doesn't really decrease the gas load, but looking at the design of the thing, I would say that it's meant more to manage carrier speed and carrier inertia. So what that means, though, is that all the excess gas is still going to be vented out of the vent ports in the AK gas tube. And because it's retarding the carrier, it may actually increase the back pressure and make it worse. So I can't really, again, speak on the KNS piston, but just by looking at the design, I would say that it's not really applicable to reducing port pop. Now, interesting fact, a lot of AKs will have vent ports that you can actually see the piston. This one actually doesn't have vent ports. And because of that, even though this is venting here, we still get a lot of gas that comes back down the gas tube of the AK and into the receiver and thus into your face. So the whole idea that the internet fixates on this kind of dusty situation here that gets back in the shooter's face is, in my opinion, irrelevant. So what does all this mean? When we're talking about shooting a direct impingement gun versus a piston gun, specifically shooting an AK versus the Mutant, for instance, the user experience when shooting a suppressed AK is gonna be significantly reduced to that of shooting a direct impingement gun. To give you anecdotal evidence of this, I will shoot this gun all day long suppressed without hearing protection. No problem, full powered ammo, I, I don't care. It would probably be even better if we had an adjustable gas block on this, but it doesn't really need it. This gun, I will only shoot suppressed without hearing protection in an emergency. It is that uncomfortable to shoot this gun suppressed 
without hearing protection. And that is how prolific the difference between full power gas venting into the space where your ears are and that of gas that has already worked before it gets out to your ears. Even though this position will be much closer to your face, this will be much more pleasant than shooting an AK with a suppressor on the end of it. Now, for a video here in the future, we're gonna be doing alignment problems with AKs. There's a whole nother thing with aligning a suppressor. There are certain designs out there that have addressed these issues. We're gonna be looking at the type of techniques that are used on the end of the gun so that you don't have to worry about baffle strikes or one of those specialized cans. Uh, if that's something you guys are interested in, sound off in the comment section down below. Thanks for joining us here on the VSO Gun Channel. I know that some super duper AK fanboys are going to be like, Nats, rifle is fine. And you're right, it is. The rifle is fine, but it was never designed to be suppressed. Specific amount of gas can flow through. Remember, this is not easy math either, because it's not linear. It's actually, you know, pressure volume flow is not a linear relationship. So small changes in the gas port size lead to large changes in overall pressure inside the system. <coughs> However, we do have to admit, I don't even think this is debatable at this point in time, that these guns just get dirtier when we're talking about the guts of the gun. Anyway.